Oh, smells like pine. Got my new outer filters for my Wen air purifier. Well, air cleaner, I don't know what you want to call it. It's a dust remover. Wayne Scotting. Can you tell I do uh, some epoxy work? <laughs> so I just need the regular cast for these guys here. Regular cast works for um, up to three quarters of an inch. And these are five eighths of an inch uh, knots. And we're going to cast those with some epoxy. Uh, we'll put some black color into the epoxy. I, I could get some metal flake and mix it into and I might but I think I'll just leave them black I'm not sure yet um, but a little metal flake to match the bar top might be good so got the Tyvek put on the boards that's what keeps the glue from running through you can see I just coated the side here right there so we can pull that off now and all that's done is it's made that that knot would be a little tighter. Okay, so I've got to get the all the, the tape off of these, get these ready for the plane, and set them aside, and then we're going to get started on these ones here. So you can see we've got the tie back in them already, ready to go. Got to fill those. There's a little bit of crap here and there. Um, unfortunately, I probably should have done a better job of getting anything loose out of these before I put that Tyvek in. I actually think it'll be okay. And then this one I'm gonna experiment and just pour a little bit into those knots. that's okay that'll clean up fine it is a little bit low but again that, that's probably just fine now we're gonna let that finish drying all of the wainscot that we uh, put the epoxy in so you can see it it's really working good and while we were at it we did the coffee table had a couple spots I needed to do this is all going to get planed off and we'll have to do a little fill with some wax on those and, and that's okay while the epoxy cures I'm going to get back to planing you can see here this old Ryobi still works but this dust gate here or whatever you want to call it dust blocker very weak and what I have learned over the years is that it allows the vacuum to draw from out here, from out this area here, rather than just throughout the hood. So cheap $200 deal 10 years or more ago. You can see it's been pretty heavily used. This guy just started to peel off a number of years ago and I just need to wrap it back on there. So we're gonna fix that. What I do is I just come in under here Super simple. One of the problems of <laughs> 
having a shop vac as your vacuum that you use down there that it is um, something you've got to constantly move around so now I have to take that hose connect it to the bottom of the table saw so I'll show you what I'm doing I'm just trying to make some more of the uh, top plate for the wainscoting and you can see if you look at this it's really got a bend right here I can put my finger underneath here pretty much so not very good you can see there was a knot right here um, obviously we had some some crazy movement and we're gonna straighten that out and turn this into a piece that we can use we're gonna we're gonna trim that sucker down you can see it's got a face bend to it we're gonna take a lot of that out uh, you could see here let's move over here so you could see here where we've got walnut that I've been working with so this is all English walnut all playing down a bit of face bend here that's okay this piece here will get ripped down and that'll get turned into the top plate so top plate top plate baseboards right here and then the piece I'm working on over there that will be top plate and look at this this which I decided really I'm not gonna be able to use it for anything really productive that I can think of at the moment so I'm gonna rip it down and turn that into top plate so all right now it's time to get to work All right, there we go. Let's see if we could take out some of that face bend now. See, so can you see that? So we've taken this piece and we've ripped her down to the three and a half inch size that we need. Okay, the moment of truth. There's a little bend here. You see, just a slight bend. So, if we use this side, you see that we can push it down. So that means that when we secure this at the, at the top plate on top of the wainscot, we'll be able to suck that into the wall just fine, and that'll be fine. That'll work perfect. So, now, three and a half we got to turn this into three and a half we got to turn this into three and a half so I've got work to do All right, that piece ended up, um, oh, it's okay. It's definitely got a face bend. Um, it's crowned a little bit. I don't have a long sled. Um, I guess I really need to make one. I did a terrible job. I thought I could go a little bit freehand on it. Um, it's not pretty. So I don't know, we'll see. I may try another swipe at it to see if I can clean that up. Hey folks, okay. I don't have a long sled, but what I do have is I did buy four foot chunk of the Rockler sled rail and two clamps. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw them down to this nice, nice straight cut piece of uh, MDF particle board. Um, we're going to screw it down, clamp this to it, and then run this sucker through. And the way we'll do that isn't that hard. We just measure the width of this piece of wafer board or MDF and then set the table saw to that width minus whatever we want to cut off to get this one piece cut flat and then we'll be fine and if i have to take my top plate down to three inches to get everything where i want it well that's fine I, that's the beauty of making it yourself okay now take this crown out 
I've got to try to get this board centered on here. That's even right there. When you're clamping them down, sometimes that's they just move on you. <laughs> that was uh, that was quite the quite the challenge, um, but I want you to see this. I'm going to show you what I did here. So if you look, there's a bit of flex in this guy, but you can see that is nice and straight actually. So we took all that out. Um, you can see it here, tad of wing there. That's okay. It looks very good. When I look down the top, you know the. You go to the, to the store and you're looking down the top. And boy, that looks good. So, it ain't a joiner. It's, it's a little cumbersome to use. And I'll admit that with the blade that high, when you're back here on the push, I probably should have had the guard on. It's a little bit worrisome because after you push this out, you're out here. Boom, you get past it. Then you want to take your hand and head this way. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a couple inches away here, but that's dangerous. That's dangerous. So I probably should have put the guard on there, the blade guard. Um, you know, I've got the riving knife. I've got the blade guard. But anyway, so now, now that I've done that, I've got a couple other pieces that I'm going to have to rip down to three inches now. Uh, we did a little bit of a change, so... Uh, Yep, so we got three inches. So now I'm going to have to take all of my top plates, make them three inches, and that will change my wainscot overall size. That's okay. Um, I cut them all along on purpose. I knew that when you're working with this kind of wood, meaning rough sawn stuff that just came off the sawmill, that you're dealing with yourself, and you didn't mill it specifically for any given reason, that you will be faced with certain challenges, this being one of them. So um, that's okay. That's part of the game. That's part of woodworking. That's what we do. So I'm going to take the uh, the rest of the one inch stuff that I already have planed, the, the three and a half inch uh, width that I use for my top plate. I'm going to take those, put the long ones on the big sled, get those ripped down to three inches. Then I'll put the, um, the short ones on the small sled. And then I'll take this guy here and I'll get that ripped down. What we've got here is we've got a Craig AccuCut rail clamped to one end. We're going to set up my nice Makita onto the sled that rides on top of it. And then we're going to rip a flat surface down. Once I rip a flat surface down, I can then take it over to the table saw. Now we've got a decent usable edge. Ugh, that's an ugly piece of wood, but we're gonna fix that. Yikes. So we've got some some real movement in this thing. So uh, movement, you know, in a piece like that where you've got all kinds of figure, it's it's grown all kinds of crazy. That creates a lot of different stress in the wood and that's gonna cause it to move. And so we've got two pieces, three and a half inches thick right here. So those two pieces that came out of that, that big, almost burl looking piece um, are gonna get planed down trim down and we're going to make them work so i'm going to switch batteries i don't have much battery life yet the next step of making my wainscot baseboard and top plate is to cut the groove in the top of the baseboard so i'll show you here we've got my 
fingers on the table saw. That will help keep this piece flat against the fence. And we need it to be flat against the fence. Otherwise, we goof up this cut down here. So we're gonna try to make a pass sitting like this and see how well that works compared to what I was doing, which was trying to do this without. pretty clean it's not perfect but it's very very clean and I can clean that last little bit up with a razor and that'll be perfect so if I were to take a, a chunk of paneling real quick you could see the goal here is to fit that right there like so there you go perfect absolutely perfect All right, this battery's about dead, so I'm gonna finish up. Okay, well, the wind Scott is playing now to 220, so hit it with 80. 120 then 220 after it was all planed down to half inch All I've got to do now with it is turn that into tongue and groove. So hopefully do that tomorrow the baseboard Which I, I didn't have anything quite long enough for every section of the baseboard So what we're gonna do is we're gonna splice so We've got some here You'll see and then what we'll do is you know, one of these longer pieces, we'll take one of the shorter pieces and splice those together. Probably do a 45 to make those work. And then the same thing with the top plates. So those are the top plates that will sit at the top of the wainscot. That actually I think is going to look really good. So dust, dust everywhere. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, that little win air purifier I have it's working overtime I also got out some uh, five minute epoxy I had one more board to seal and fill in some some gaps on so I decided to just use some five minute epoxy I have it actually works really well for something quick like this um, we'll hit it on the plane knock that down sand her down and it'll be good to go so there we go Hopefully tomorrow I'll get the tongue and groove done and the base and top plates all done. Those just need to get sanded, but the tongue and groove needs to get put on the wainscot. If I can get all that done tomorrow, then we can start with the stain and the die. And yes, it's a die on the top plate and the base plate. It's a Keta die brown. I use about a quarter teaspoon per eight ounces of hot water. Works really, really well. And then we'll verithane that. We are going to do a spray varathane, I think a satin finish on the wainscot, and then I think we're going to do, we might only do satin on the top and bottom plate as well. Um, we just thought that a gloss might be too much uh, down there. All right, we're going to find out how that turns out tomorrow. Now, it's been a long day. It's uh, after 7. I think I started about 7 today. Um, had a couple breaks, break for lunch and whatnot, but uh, it's been a long day, so... I'm going to call it Bourbon 30. You guys have a great night. I look forward to showing you what this turns out like.